The Super Nintendo is such an awesome system. I still remember to this day when it was launched, going to the store with my best friend at the time, picking one up, staying up all night until we completed Super Mario World, going around bragging to all our friends, nobody believing us because it just came out. Such a fond memory. It, it was crazy. I love this system. There's so many awesome games for it, and I still play it quite a bit to this day. But back when it was out, I never thought of anything to do with backed up games, reproduction games, flash carts, anything like that, because it really wasn't a thing at the time. But it's something that eventually I did discover, you know, in the around the early 2000s anyway. But with the Super Nintendo, unbeknownst to me at the time, there were things like this. The Super Disk Interceptor. There were ways to back up your games and to play counterfeit or backed up games that were not on original media. There were ways to do it. And I don't necessarily think this was uh, very popular in the U.S. I never knew anybody who did any of this kind of stuff. I've been hearing from people now that say they've had different variations of devices like this to play backup games way back when. But when I was younger, when this system was out, I never heard of anything like this. So today we're going to be taking a look at this, kind of talking about it. This is the Super Disk Interceptor, and it was released by Sane Ting Company Limited, made in Taiwan. Pretty interesting stuff. So what this did was, is it used floppy disks. These little three and a half inch floppy disks. It's crazy because I purchased this not too long ago in a lot, and it came with like hundreds of floppies. Just crazy. A lot of them had Chinese writing on them. Uh, most of them worked from when I tested them. It, it was just nuts. I was like, wow, whoever originally owned this thing, they went crazy. I don't even have all the, the floppies here. This is just one tiny section of it. But it's almost like they had the full U.S. library of games on floppy disks. It was just nuts. Like, what is this, NBA 96? Look, it's all printed on there all nicely and stuff. <laughs> it's just nuts. The pe what, what people went through back in the day to not have to buy games had to be crazy i never would have thought of anything like this so this thing i do find kind of interesting because the way it's designed and the way this cartridge adapter area looks it looks like a like a like a famicom game a super famicom game um but it does fit in an unmodified us system just fine Strangely enough, um, after testing this thing and using it, I found a few things. So it will not work on a U.S. system like this because of the lockout chip. So the one thing you would have to do is pop in a game in this top little cartridge slot that's on the side. But as you see, that's also Famicom, Super Famicom shaped. You cannot take a U.S. game and pop it in there, but you do need this to bypass the lockout. So a Japanese game would fit just fine, go in there, allow you to boot this thing up. Uh, it actually doesn't work with this because this is a, a repro game, but it does work with this adapter that came bundled with this. And from what I've heard originally, uh, these super disc interceptors did come with these. So this could either be used on this unit to plug it into a console, but from what I'm seeing and from what I've tested, it works on Super Famicom and a U.S. release system. So I'm assuming that this was probably more so for this section um, to either, if you had your system modified with the lockout, uh, then you wouldn't have to do this, I guess. I don't know how uh, prevalent those uh, modifications were back then, <laughs> but... In order to use it on a U.S. system now, in order to load a floppy disk game, you'd have to have it set up like this. Um, now, if you use this on something that doesn't have a lockout or if your system's modified, however, I'm not really all that familiar with the lockout stuff. because so I've never really had to dig into that kind of thing. Uh, but if you already have that all situated or you're using this on say a, a clone system or the super NT, you don't have to use this necessarily um, any which way other than on here. 
not to bypass the lockout, but to dump your game. So you would have this plugged in or without this adapter, this has to be used. I mean, I guess I was kind of confusing there. Uh, this has to be used with the slot if you're gonna dump US games because they just don't fit. But you could also put Super Famicom games in there and dump them that way. And pretty neat. There's three different versions of the Super Disk Interceptor. There's 16 megabyte, 24, and 32. Uh, so obviously you're gonna be more limited with the lower end one. Um, but you would just put a blank floppy in there, copy your game, and now you have a floppy disk version. So I would imagine uh, people would rent games possibly, uh, borrow games and dump them. Because from what I'm understanding, the, the file format that this uses isn't something that's re you know readily available out there. Um, and even during the time when this was out, like who was really uh, you know trading ROMs? Maybe they were, I, I really don't know. I find that kind of fascinating. But essentially this thing is a big ass flash cart from the early 90s. This thing came out, I wanna say 92, 93, um, it was, you know, mostly popular in Asian countries, but, you know, it's like we have things like this now that why would we ever want to use this thing? I've seen comments on old, really old uh, message boards talking about similar devices to this, uh, to where you could swap the uh, floppy disk drive out and put in uh, like a USB reader or something like that. And people would use this as like the ultimate flash cart because flash carts definitely were not as advanced as this at that time. And I find that stuff interesting because I never really was into the flash cart scene until very recently. But my first experience with any kind of pirating of games or bootleg, any of that, whatever the hell you want to call it, soldier boy in it up was way back in the early 2000s, which, I mean, it just seems like that was yesterday, uh, with Licksang.com. If you remember Licksang, oh my God, I always think about that site because I had so many weird things happen with them at the time, and they had a very strange history and a lot of legal issues, but they would sell linkers and flash uh, carts for the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance. And I cannot remember specifically why I was looking for something like this from Licksang, but I did want to get a Game Boy Advance flash cart. And they had like flash advance 64 megabytes, uh, different things like that, that were out at the time. And they were pretty pricey for having very limited capabilities. And I remember, you know, looking into it, ordering one, and there was a flash linker where you could link it to your, your computer through, the, uh, through your printer port, <laughs> back up your cartridges, put them onto the flash cartridge. There was just all sorts of craziness you could do. And I'd, I'd ordered one of those from them. I could never get it to work right. That's the one thing I do remember is just being frustrated with the thing. I could just never get it to work for what I wanted to use it for. And that annoyed the crap out of me. But I, I remember I had like something happen where I ordered from Licksang and it was something else. I don't recall exactly what it was because they sold a lot of different things. Uh, but this was like, like 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. And they took my money and never shipped the product. And I was like flipping out, like what the hell's going on with these guys? And then what happened was, is they, they had started kind of doing different business at the time because Nintendo, Sony, everybody and their mother was on their asses for selling these types of products. You know, I don't know if they ever sold the Super Disc Interceptor. Maybe they did, but, uh, you know, with the Game Boy stuff, especially, you know, selling the things to pirate games, uh, you know, these companies went after them. So they kind of shifted their business around and started selling a lot of other things. I remember they had the little uh, Kuro Q, um, little cars, little tiny RC cars, and a few other things that I'd ordered from them because I was really into that stuff at the time. Uh, but whatever it was I ordered, they didn't ship it. And then it turned out that their website, they put up a message on their website that that they were out of business because of Sony. Uh, so, you know, prior to that, the legal problems they had, they just shifted their business around. And the next thing you know, a year or two later, they're shut down because of some other legal issues. So what happened was, was Lick saying they were importing PSP units, the Sony PSP, the portable. Uh, they were importing those and s selling them 
uh, putting them into the UK marketplace. And they got sued for that, for some kind of infringement. Like, hey, you know, this is this is some kind of trademark infringement. It's not even a product that's available in the UK at the time. And you're selling it there. So Lixang wound up just whatever legal troubles with Sony they had at the time. And the UK courts, you know, whatever happened, they went out of business. I got screwed. I remember having to reverse the charge through my bank. It was a big freaking hassle. But that was my initial experience with flash cart type stuff. Now, things are a lot better with, <laughs> with these types of devices. The SD2, SNES, uh, you know, the, the EverDrives for various systems. And they're a lot easier to use, too. I would never use the Super Disk Interface Interceptor, whatever it's called, instead of this. It's just, this is convenient. This thing is not. Um, and, you know, you can get these from reputable companies within the U.S., like Stone Age Gamer, for example, which every single flash cartridge that I have has came from Stone Age Gamer. If you want to check them out, I highly recommend them. I've done a lot of videos talking about their products in the past um, and my experiences with them. Uh, check them out. Link in the description. But, I mean, it's not so much what this was about. Just kind of like, hey, this is this is now. This is from the early 90s. So crazy. Really crazy stuff. I mean, these little floppy disks and, and whatnot, you know, it, it, it worked fairly well uh, from my testing. Unfortunately, now, uh, after I've opened this thing up and messed around with it quite a bit, my unit has stopped working. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the issue is. The drive doesn't want to work. Uh, maybe I could swap the drive out, find something else uh, to fix it, because everything else works. Just the drive doesn't uh, power on anymore, and all the connections are good in there. So guess I might have to get the multimeter out or just find a replacement driver, maybe get one of those USB replacements and mess with it that way. It's, it's, a, it's a piece of history more so than anything. It's not very practical. It's a very interesting device from the early 90s and just wanted to share this with you guys today. So there you go, the Super Disk Interceptor, the Soldier Boy Disk Interceptor. If he was in business back in the early 90s, this is something he would have been selling. So, hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. With that said, check out the giveaway in the description. Forgot to mention that. I'm always forgetting to mention these things. Check out the giveaway. Link is in the description for a Super 64, an M Cable Gaming Edition, and a Brawler 64 controller from Retro Fighters, the ultimate Nintendo 64 setup. One person will win it. A little less than two weeks to go on that giveaway provided by Castlemania Games. So take a look at that. And... I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-byes, and boom. Thumbs up, bye-bye.